this very video, I'll be teaching how to find the inverse Laplace transform of that very expression on the board. The first thing I'm going to do is to resolve this very expression into its partial fraction components. So I'm going to say s squared minus 11s plus 6 divided by s plus 1 brackets s minus 2 all squared. This should be equal to the denominator here. The first guy we have is s plus 1. So this is over s plus 1 plus since this is a linear factor that is repeated this is going to be s minus 2 plus s minus 2 squared please you can watch my videos on partial fraction and subscribe to my channel to learn more about this so this is what we we'll have now the top is a b and c so that's what we're going to be having a b and c so right about now let us find the lcm here we can actually do this thing very fast but let me just go the slow way. This is s squared minus 11s plus 6 divided by s plus 1 bracket s minus 2 all squared equal to what is the LCM of everything here? It will become s plus 1 bracket s minus 2 all squared. Now everything here divided by s plus 1. s plus 1 cancels s plus 1. What will be left? s minus 2 squared times it with a, so this is a bracket s minus 2 squared, then plus everything here divided by s minus 2, what will be remaining? s plus 1, s minus 2, times it by b, so this is b bracket s plus 1 bracket s minus 2. I hope you know why we still have s minus 2 here, because this is s minus 2 squared. When you divide it with a single s minus 2, we still have one part of it remaining. Then multiply by the s plus 1 and with b. Then plus everything here, divide it with s minus 2 squared. The square will cancel the squared guy, so we have s plus 1 remaining. Times c, this c brackets s plus 1. So that's what I have. Now the next I'm going to do is this. If you look at this expression properly, the denominators are the same. So what does that tell you? The numerators are also going to be the same. So it means s squared minus 11s plus 6 will be equal to a brackets s minus 2 squared plus b brackets s plus 1 brackets s minus 2 plus c brackets s plus 1. So this is what we're going to be having. Now the next I'm going to do here is to what? Equate coefficients. Equate coefficient. Please take note, you need to really know how to do expansion properly. I don't want to start um, expanding everything that we have here. It's going to take a long time, except you would want me to do that. But Expanding is very easy. So I'll just expand this thing, just one line. I'm going to expand it with one line. So this is s squared minus 11s plus 6 equal. Now what am I going to have here? s minus 2 all squared is going to give you a bracket s squared minus 4s plus 4. That's how we expand very fast. I'll link up the video on how to open squares at this part. Then plus b bracket what will we have at this part this will give you s squared minus s minus 2 when you open this very bracket then plus i can leave this one like this c bracket s plus 1. now if you look at this carefully we're not even done with opening the bracket so this is s squared minus 11s plus 6 equal a times s squared so this is a s squared minus 4as plus 4a because a would have to open the brackets here so a will have to times everything plus b times s squared bs squared b times minus s minus bs b times minus 2 minus 2b then plus c times s cs plus c times 1 c now this very thing that i've just done here you can just do it with your eyes but i just said let me what let me do it for you so first thing I'm going to do here, first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to equate, equate all the s squares. Oh, okay. Now look at this. I think let me do something very fast. I don't want to go into simultaneous equations. Let me find my a. Come now. So what I'm going to do? Let me find a using cover up rule. Let me find a using cover up so that it will be fast. I don't really have much time because if I want to equate all the s squares. I'm going to have, this is a s squared, this is b s squared. I'll be going into a simultaneous equation. I don't have time for that. See, 
This is S plus 1 with A. So if I'm using cover up rule and I say S plus 1 should be equal to 0, if I say S plus 1 should be equal to 0, what would your S become finally? Minus 1. So if S has to be minus 1, come to this other side. A would then become, anywhere you see S here, put what? Minus 1. So what is minus 1 squared? Minus 1 squared is 1. Minus 11 times minus 1 is what? Plus 11. Then plus what? 6. Divided by, since this is S plus 1, no need for you to put it again. That is why it is called the cover up rule. You can watch the video on how to do cover up rule at that very part. Then S minus 2 squared. We said S is what? Minus 1. So minus 1 minus 2 is what? Minus 3. So this is minus 3 all squared. 1 plus this will give me 12. 12 plus 6 will give me what? 18. Divided by what? 9. So this is what? 2. My A is 2. I do not really have time to start doing simultaneous whatever. I don't have that strength. So A is what? 2. So I'm done with that. Now let me get my B finally. I'm going to say equating S squared. I think this is the part where it gets very beautiful for me. Equating all the S squared guys. Now what is the equivalent of S squared here? The equivalent of S squared here is what? 1. So this is 1 equal to which other thing has S squared here? This is A S squared. So the coefficient here is what? A then plus what is the equivalent here? B. Because this is B S squared. So we have B. So this is 1 equal. Your A is what? 2 plus b. So what does that tell you? Your b is what? Minus 1. Because if 2 comes to this other side, 1 minus 2 is what? Minus 1. So your b is what? Minus 1. And our a is what? 2. Now what's the next thing I'm going to find? c. Now to find your c, you can use anything you like. For me, I choose to use what? The constants. I want to equate all the constants together. That's what I want to do. So equating constants equating constants equating constants what are the constants here the guys that don't have x so this is 6 equal to so we have 6 equal to on this side what are those things that don't have x 4a does not have s so this is 4a okay capital letter a sorry then this is um, c we also have minus 2b minus 2b does not have s so this is minus 2b then plus c it does not have s so this is 6 equal 4 what is our a a is 2 so 4 times 2 is 8 then what is our b minus 1 minus 2 times minus 1 is what well, plus 2 then plus c this is 6 equal 8 plus this will give me 10 plus c so what's your c finally minus 4 that's because if you say 10 comes to this other side, 6 minus 10 will give you what? Minus 4. So I've gotten our A, B, and C. I've gotten our A, B, and C. So right now, let us find the inverse Laplace. The inverse Laplace of, what is the first expression I have here? A over S plus 1. So what was our A? A is what? A is 2. So this is 2 over S plus 1 plus inverse Laplace of, what is B? b after solving is what minus one so this is minus one over s minus two then plus what is our c c is what because we have c over s minus two squared. so what's our c c is what minus four over s minus two all to the power of two so that's what we have there okay so with this very expression let us now find the inverse laplace of everything that we have so right now, let us start with this very one. This 2 is a constant. So this is 2 exponential minus t. Why is it like that? Because the 2 is a constant. And remember that when you have over s, just x, not s squared. Just s will result to exponential. Since we have plus 1 here, it means it's actually minus 1t. So that's what I have here. Then plus, okay, this is a minus first of all. So this is minus exponential 2t. That's what I'm going to be having there. Because this minus 1, you know, it's not really nice that I will be writing 1 here. Then this is exponential. Since this is minus 2 here, this will become 2t. Okay. Then plus this very guy that you are seeing here will then become the most beautiful human being. Because this guy means I'm going to be having a t. 
Remember that when everything with S has a power, that's actually a C that we are talking about. So what is the result of this? This should be giving us minus 2C, then um, exponential 2T. But let me tell you how that happened. Now calm down, calm down. See, we have the inverse Laplace transform of minus 4 over S minus 2 all to the power of 2. Now please remember that the inverse Laplace of um, a number n factorial over s to the power of n plus 1 is always t to the power of n if you can remember. I've done it so you can check this part. I'm going to link up the video over here for you to watch. The inverse Laplace of something like this is equal to what? t to the power of what? n. So to start with, in this very expression we have what? minus 4 divided by s. This is n plus 1 but this was 2 here. So ask yourself, what would you add to 1 to get 2? Obviously, this is 1 plus what? 1. So this is 1 plus 1. I even think there's a mistake somewhere. Thank God for me actually doing this. So this is 1 plus 1. So what does this tell you? If you compare 1 plus 1 to n plus 1, that tells you that your n is what? Your n is what? 1. So it means we're supposed to have t to the power of what? 1. Now, if we have t to the power of 1 here, our n is 1, right? So what is 1 factorial? 1 factorial is still 1. So this is, sorry, sorry about this. This guy, let me say times one at this part. So this is going to become, I have my minus four, meaning it's not really important for me. So this is minus four. Then I have my t. Why do I have my t? Because of the one plus one that I discovered from this part. Then what is the next guy that I'm going to have? I'm going to be having exponential two t. Remember your first shift theorem. This very s that is here was replaced with s minus 2. And remember that whenever you have over s minus 2, your answer is always exponential 2t. That is why we have exponential 2t at this part. Thank you very much for watching this very video. The answer to this question is 2 exponential minus t minus exponential 2t minus 4t exponential 2t. Thank you very much.